wanted to say hi um, since I don't get to see your, your faces very often. Um, so we're going to go over the uh, different theories of the climax in the buffalo. <coughs> so here we're going to switch off my face. Bye. <laughs> and now we are going to go into full screen mode. So there are actually three different um, ideas of what the climax is in the buffalo. We're going to go over all three, okay? So this is Clarice Lispector. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over this bio from the Encyclopedia, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. So she was born in 1920 and she died um, in Rio in 1977. She was a short story writer and a novelist. When she was very young, um, her family was Jewish and they were living in the Russian Empire, in the Ukraine, and they uh, basically escaped the Holocaust and moved to Brazil. So she um, considers herself to be Brazilian, and she speaks Portuguese. Um, her Well, she did speak Portuguese. She's not alive now. But she's written several novels, uh, Near to the Wild Heart, The Apple in the Dark, Passion According to G.H., Agua Viva, which actually means jellyfish, and the Hour of the Star and Breath of Life. Um, typically, her characters alienated and searching for meaning in life gradually gain a sense of awareness of themselves and accept their place in an arbitrary yet eternal universe. Um, so in 2011 and 2012, probably the best translations of her novels came out um, from New Directions. They're the most recent ones, and definitely the best ones, because um, Portuguese is notoriously difficult to translate from, from its original text to English. Um, it's a very different language from English. So she wrote collections of short stories, Family Ties, and A Foreign Legion, and in 2015 they were put together for the complete stories. Um, she achieved international fame with works that depict a highly personal, almost existentialist view of the human dilemma and are written in a prose characterized by simple vocabulary and elliptical sentence structure. Um, that means they're long and open-ended, pretty much. So that's basically her bio. Um, if you want to read more, you can go to the Encyclopedia Britannica page. So the buffalo. Um, it's from her collection of short stories called Family Ties or La Ghosti Familia. Um, I summarize the plot. A woman suffering rejection from a lover journeys to the zoo to find reflection of the hatred that she can identify with. After failed encounters with various animals in an uncontrollable Ferris wheel ride, she comes into contact with the buffalo who ref reflects not only her hatred, but primal indifference to her affections. Uh, she also does die in the end, in case you were wondering. Um, it doesn't really say if it's a suicide or not. Um, that's up to your interpretation. So the first theory is what most of you said, um, that the climax is when the narrator meets the buffalo. So um, it happens on page 155. Um, the, she sees the buffalo, and then the woman sighed softly, Something white had spread itself inside her. White as paper, fragile as paper, intense as whiteness, death hummed in her ears. Um, for many scholars, they believe this is the exact moment of um, climax or epiphany. Why? Because the buffalo represents what the narrator has been searching for um, the entire story, the ultimate reflection of her hatred, um, and what she doesn't know is actually reflects her doom. Um, so why not? Why are there other theories? So other scholars stipulate that the narrative meeting her fate is in fact the conclusion of the story, that meeting the buffalo is the conclusion. Um, I actually agree, although I definitely do understand why people would think it's the climax. It does make sense. Um, but do note that nothing actually changes or has the potential for change when she meets the buffalo. Um, so, Second theory is that there are many climaxes throughout the story. Um, and this plot line 
looks, instead of one pyramid, looks like multiple pyramids or like waves, uh, as Virginia Woolf called it, moments of being. And she was an author that was noted for this um, story structure. So I'll analyze the multiple climaxes in the following slides. So why? Um, scholars don't believe that clear Spectre's writing is a typical pyramid shape. It is marked by small landmarks and realizations. Why do some people not think this theory is sound? Well, some scholars think that although there are many epiphany-like moments throughout the story, only one of them really constitutes the ultimate turning point. I agree with this, so the last theory is the one that I agree with. Although, it, again, there really isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, so let's, the first, the very first line, um, is when she's looking at the lions and it kind of interrupts her mid viewing, but it was spring. Even the lion licked the head of the smooth lioness, but this is love. This is love again. Um, and you'll find that throughout the story, there's a lot of sentences beginning with but. And it's because she's searching for something and she constantly doesn't find it. So she's always stating, but, but, but. Here's a giraffe. And she sees the giraffe on page 148. But, again, the giraffe was a virgin with newly shorn braids, with the simple-minded innocence of that which is large and light without guilt. The hippopotamus. Then there was such... A humble love and maintaining oneself only as flesh. There was such a sweet martyrdom in not knowing how to think. So she's talking about the vulnerability of the hippopotamus. The monkeys, including the ape. She would have destroyed their nudity. An ape, too, looked at her holding onto the bars. Its scrawny arms opened in form of a crucifix. Its hairy chest exposed without pride. Um... She, she thinks that the, basically they're too nude, again, too vulnerable um, to represent the hatred that she feels. The elephant. But the elephant supported its own weight. That whole elephant, which had the power to crush at will simply with its foot, yet which failed to crush anything. So she's talking about the gentleness of the elephant. Again, the camel absorbed in the process of recognizing its food, so it's too meditative. Patience, patience, patience. This alone did she encounter in the spring breeze. Then she gets on the Ferris wheel. She who could have taken advantage of the cries of others to utter her howl of agony forgot herself, and she only felt fear. Then she's faced with the Koti. She would never be able to hate the Koti, which in silence of its questioning form watched her. The inquisitive Koti asked her questions like a child. And then she finally comes face to face with the Zibuffalo. So the woman slowly shook her head, terrified by the hatred with which the buffalo, tranquil with hatred, watched her. So she's found the hatred that she's trying to feel. The third theory, um, which is the one that I agree with the most, I think, but you can decide which one you agree with, is when she's at on the Ferris wheel. Um, so that's the climax, the epiphany or the turning point. Um, more specifically, the climax occurs at the top of the Ferris wheel. So I'm actually going to go ahead and read part of it for you now. So, this is the part where she's talking about basically how she lifts off from the ground and the shrieks of girls with their boyfriend. She cannot stand them. Um, and it's really, really awful to her. And then she gets... Um, she feels as if her death is occurring. Um, she who could have taken advantage of the cries of others, as we read, we read that sentence earlier. And then I want you to pay attention to the next paragraph. And now this silence which was so sudden, 
they were back on the ground the machinery